вот уже треть жителей США в возрасте от 18 до 24 лет верят, что Земля плоская. А почти 15% американцев в возрасте за 30 с ними согласны. Никому не нравится чувство, что мы находимся на маленьком шарике, который несется сквозь Вселенную. Да, закроют программы с астрофизическим и космическим уклоном. Оставшиеся естественные науки, как биология, геология, океанология, археология и другие, должны быть полностью обновлены. still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it so. Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. Yeah, Earth is flat. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently hovering over Washington, D.C., having a snack, waiting for the United States of America to swear in its new president this Friday, who also happens to be a reality television star and is, interestingly enough, hated by the mainstream media who turned him into a reality star. Strange times we live in, indeed. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I am your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Kluge, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at MarkSargent.com, EnclosedWorld.com, or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, you must just be standing in line waiting for that wonderful moment on Friday. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if you are listening to this and it is not January 17th, 2017, well, you are not listening to it live. So please do not use the call-in number because it's just going to go to voicemail. Quote of the day from Peanut Gallery. And this is a, an appropriate one, I think. Professor Einstein's secretary was so burdened with inquiries as to the meaning of relativity that the professor decided to help her out. He told her to answer these inquiries as follows. When you sit with a nice girl for two hours, you think it's only a minute. But when you sit on a hot stove for a minute, you think it's two hours. That's relativity. 
I actually remember that quote. Peanut Gallery sent it to me today, but I had known that quote for years. And uh, I actually heard that it was a, uh, a seeing a nice girl on a park bench. But when you think about it, the, the deeper meaning behind uh, the, the relative concept of time, it, it really gets mind-bending. So anyway, thank you, Peanut Gallery. Um, <clears throat> today we may or may not get an appearance from uh, my lovely but careless secretary who happened to grace me with her rare presence on last week's Q&A email show. So be prepared for that. So if you hear a female voice, it is not me doing my impersonation of pre- Peter Brady in the 70s. Uh, it actually will be my secretary. Uh, the opening sequence, the, the music you've been hearing recently, is been, the mashups uh, for the top of the hour and the start of the show are being done by Chip Baker, new flat earther. And uh, I really like his stuff. People send me music every once in a while, but I, I love it. You, you want to you uh, hit one of my buttons, one of my, my good buttons, give me a mashup, something with a movie reference built into it. I've loved those ever since. Oh, geez, going back all the way to uh, uh, I Know What You're Thinking uh, by uh, Information Society in the late 80s when they used that Spock reference where he said pure energy. Which was which was a great one. So anything with a so the first opening sequence you probably heard was the Warriors and the top of the hour. You also hear Doctor Strange Love, wonderful movie directed by legendary director Stanley Kubrick. Uh, let's see here before we mention what's been going on with uh, astronauts dying because that has been a trend as of late. Uh, the Souk event in Victoria, Canada. I want to rattle that off to you. This Saturday, uh, January 21st, from noon to 4, I will be at a sort of a flat Earth event. It's called Towards an Earthly Cosmology, Rethinking Our Terrestrial Home. You can check it out at voicesofcascadia.wordpress.com. Uh, there's a $30 cover charge. I have, you know, I am only a guest speaker at this, and it's going to be at Souk. Yoga Studio, that's at 6750 West Coast Road, Souk in Victoria. I'm sorry, uh, Vancouver Island. I'm not sorry. And uh, the, just the, the quick little rundown then on that is uh, in science, the final day, the final say in the discourse of all things earthly, what alternative ideas exist that challenge the current models of our universe in the scientific, mythological, and experimental realms? Finally, why is it important to revisit cosmology in an age of scientism and what new and ancient discoveries are awaiting us by renewing our spirit of investigation? Join Green Man for an in-depth presentation, heated discussion, and holistic foods prepared by nature's chef Tom Crawl. And your host, Dante, your world will never be the same, and special guest, me. Uh, it is not a Flat Earth Mixer, but if you guys want to, kind of, anyone wants to show up and, and rap with me for a while, I will be there from noon to four this Saturday, unless something horrible happens, and you never know with your inauguration coming up. I'm hoping spaceships and meteors, but you know, who knows. Uh, before we get into the phone calls, and by the way, the phone lines are open tonight. It is 720-897-6111. That number, again, is 720-897-6111. Operators are standing by, and by that I mean me. So there is no producer you have to go through. You're going to go straight to me, so be nice. Because remember, no matter where you go, there you are. Uh, A little quick, before we get to Flat Earth News at the top of the hour, Eugene Cernan, uh, the last man, if you believe mainstream science, and I don't, but the peanut gallery mentioned this to me, and honestly, I had forgotten that he was an astronaut entirely, but uh, he was one of the guys, the, supposedly the last man that walked on the moon, he was singing that song, you know, at the end, before they took off, and he supposedly was one of the guys that snapped the picture, the infamous Apollo 17 picture, the only picture of the entire Earth in its sun disk glory that was taken from 1972 all the way up till the summer of 20. 15. So, uh, I, am I sad he died? No. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a, a record, a song that was sent to me on a, on a 45 recently, and the guy also included a bumper sticker, a rare bumper sticker from John Glenn's presidential rate. I, I completely forgotten that John Glenn uh, ran for president in 1984. But here it is. There's the bumper sticker. John Glenn for president. And it's actually signed on the back. Now, it, what's it worth right now? I don't know. It probably was worth something back in the day. 
uh, when eBay was first new. But uh, now, you know, if this thing ever comes to realization, this thing will be worth nothing. Maybe not even the paper is to burn it on. But you never know. So let's get into emails while we're waiting for phone calls. And remember, that number is 720-897-6111. Uh, long distance charges will pro- apply because that is a Colorado number. Even though I'm not in Colorado, I'm currently up in Victoria, Canada. This first email is from Steve. He goes, Mark, thank you for reading my last email on your show. You did pronounce the city correctly. Chisago City, Minnesota. Most people say Chicago. And what, why wouldn't they? I mean, it, it looks like a typo for Chicago. I've never even heard of Chisago, but that's interesting. It is a gorgeous small town surrounded by clear blue lakes. Come visit any time. I have three points in this email, two comments and one question. Point one, one of the things I admire the most about you is your faith in God. Please stand strong in it. I feel that sometimes you placate the listeners a bit by saying the creator or creators, whatever or whoever they may be. I encourage you to stand strong and just say, that is if you believe what I think you do, that God created the world just like the Bible says he did and that is who created it. Remember, your possibly strongest clue about they are hiding God. Please do not water it down. People will not be turned off. They will respect you even if they disagree and many more may become Christ followers. This is not a criticism of you, just encouragement to stand on your beliefs. Point two, I have found my greatest successes getting people into discovering flat earth for themselves come when I first ask a couple questions to determine if they are awake. You know what I mean. Do they believe Kennedy was assassinated and our government was involved? Do they think 9-11 was an inside job? Do they think Antonio Scalia was murdered? I I didn't know that one very well. Uh, That John Kennedy Jr. was also murdered, etc. I have also found that anyone who believes these things is eager to hear about the flat earth. They don't think it is weird at all. They just haven't heard it yet. And they are already used to other people thinking they are nuts. Point three. I am not smart enough to figure this one out, so I am asking you, when it comes to the formula for figuring curvature, miles squared times 8 inches divided by 12 inches to get feet, well, if you take a globe, that formula should work if you are measuring anywhere where you are looking in a line that would go eventually cross the equator somewhere if it was continued. But what if you are looking due east or west and you are halfway up, say, in North America, then the circumference is maybe half of what is at the equator. Would the formula be different? Perhaps even show tighter curvature? That's it, sir. Thank you. Thanks for keeping it. Uh, keeping at it, and I know you will be noted in history as a key player in breaking the secret open to the general public. God bless you, Steve Harris, Chisago City, Minnesota. Um, yeah, when it comes to the, the curvature, no, uh, it doesn't matter where you are. The curvature is always, again, if you believe in mainstream science, the curvature is always the same. Don't, don't forget that the North Pole and the South Pole on, on a globe, uh, that's just what they say it is. It, you know, the top and the bottom of the world, it's wherever you want to be. So just assume that you know, if, wherever you are standing, you just spin that and you're the very top. You know, wherever you are, consider that the North Pole. And then that's, that's easy to figure out the curvature. It's just eight inches per mile squared. So it's every mile times itself times eight inches. So three, three miles is three times three is nine times eight is 72. Uh, and the peanut gallery says yes, unless it's pear shaped. Funny. It's good. Uh, or if you go a hundred miles, it's a hundred times a hundred times eight inches divided by 12, which is pushing 6,700 feet. So thank you. Thank you for that. And I think he actually had a follow up email, which I can get to here real quick. One second. The follow-up email was, sorry for the delay in opening. Mark, I also want to commend you on your clean vocabulary in your shows and videos. You speak like a gentleman, and therefore I can have my family listen to you without them hearing profanity. Good point. For the most part, I do try to do that. Uh, because even though I, I'm a big believer in, in free speech and, and you know, saying, you know, expressing your emotions as clearly and concisely as possible, you know, profanity isn't for everyone. Uh, what is it with so many flat earth videos made by people who just discovered the F word? <laughs> who could they possibly think they are impressing? They frankly give the whole flat earth community a bad name by making this look like morons. I stop any video as soon as I hear profanity. As a matter of fact, over a year ago when the Morgyle was just getting rolling, he used, he used profanity. I wrote to him, explained that his foul language was offensive and actually hurt his cause. 
I reminded him that wives, mothers, daughters, and children need to be able to view his videos in the foul language, ruled out uh, my referring his videos to anyone. Well, John is such a class guy that he noted in his videos and made his change and cleaned up his language out of respect to his listeners. I love that guy. And he also answers all emails and really cares what people think. Thanks again for your classy, clean presentations, Steve. And, uh, yeah, actually, I know I learned that way before I got emails from you. There was a show, I think it was an interview I had done where uh, I swore, I think, twice during the interview. And two different Christian women emailed me and said they were never going to listen to anything else I ever did again because I, because I actually used profanity. So anyone out there making stuff, you got to understand your audience. There's people out there – and I – Look, I, I'll be the first one to tell you, when I was growing up, I was a dumb, blonde, naive kid from an island, a small island, not a big one like the one I'm on right now. And I was very naive when it came to stuff. And the first call's coming in from 215 area code. Let's pick it up, shall we? One sec. You're on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? Hey, uh, Mark, it's Sean Grantham, uh, first-time caller. I'm a two-year listener. If you wait one second, I just got to turn you down here on the radio. Okay. All right, I'm here with you. My bad. No, no worries. So how are you, Mark? I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, I've gotten emails from you, right? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to give you a voice to the uh, email, you know? Nice. Nice. What uh, what's going on? Where are so you? Did you get Where? that uh, the the Photoshop I uh, the sent you? Uh, when did you send it? Uh, maybe like a couple days ago. It's uh, I superimposed. You know that uh, one with the extra islands on it. It's all detailed. Gives out the names. It's got that summer oh, right, date. Right, right, you know? Yep, yep, yep. I I totally remember that. Yeah. One. Yep. Yeah. So I superimposed the um, you know, the UN flag one over it, and you notice how like you always say Antarctica is those maybe those olive branches, right? You know what I mean? So. Yep. I figured, you know, you know how they have an opening at the top. It's, maybe that's what it's, uh, you know, kind of representing there. Maybe. maybe, yeah, maybe it's, it's. There's so many cool things, so many cool possibilities about that map. I love my yeah. the one that I really enjoyed in 2016 was that. Um, and by the way, two one, f- I'm sorry, three three four area code. Wait till this call's over, please, and and I will promise I'll get to you. The um the one I really enjoyed was that thousand year old map that Chris and Shree G. Yeah, I love that one too. That one's a good one. Too. That one I saw that it's like, oh man. That one makes so much Yeah, I saw much that sense. one first. That one's a good one. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, I love all the callers every week. You guys get me through the week. Uh, you know, it's just crazy going through all this stuff in my head all the time and with the government stuff. And, you know, I've been conspiracy since 9-11 when I was, like, what, 12 years old when that happened, 10 years old, you know? So yeah. after I saw Loose Change, you know, that's been my world. Aliens, ancient aliens, all... You know, I've always been a, the biggest sci-fi nerd the, my whole life. You know, I, I, I would have been on Mars tomorrow if i had a ticket you know what i mean so it's like <laughs> for you to do this to me last year i went through a whole life-changing event like you know what i mean like you changed my whole life so it's uh it's been good but i've always been into like you know lost ancient societies like uh you know basically what i think overall is like you know written history is back to like nephilim era you know bible you know noah and all that you know that's a written history but like before that i think it was like atlantis like you say previous tenants you oh, know yeah. what i mean the pyramid builders because, um, you know, I watch a lot of a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, documentaries on really old, ancient, ancient documentaries that people just doing research on all the pyramids and, you know, oh, yeah. the Bosnian pyramid. That's the biggest one on the planet, you know. So, yeah, that's uh, a great one. Yeah, it's cool stuff, all that kind of stuff. I've been doing that my whole uh, whole life, really. Nice. And uh, nice. I think before all that era, you know how, uh, you know, the, the, the trees, you know, all the trees, that, that theory of the trees with the bigger trees from the mountains. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, no trees on a flat earth. Yep, um, know that one. Yep. I think that I'd call that, you know, tree of life era. You know what I mean? Like, like it, it was just like, it got, you know, I think the whole earth was one tree of life. You know how you say Pangea, just little seas, maybe no sun, no moon. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, I think it goes down. That was the beginning, you know, the tree of life era where it was just the earth. Like say, imagine the continent. If you take the mountains, right. And they say that about the trees, those are big trees. What about each continent it was just a, a whole tree you know just the whole thing was a tree yeah and like you know tree of life and uh i don't know i think it just slowly degraded with you know uh just the learning process it is a whole learning process of stimulation you know it's all like just good and bad and everything else you know it's a, it's yep. a weird place we're here and uh you've opened my eyes to a lot of this stuff you jaron you know the whole crew i've been listening to you guys for a long time and uh 
good to talk to you, you know? Oh, hey, man. I'm, I'm, I'm flattered and, and uh, glad I could help in any way. It sounds like you're, you know, you're heading down the right path and you're super charged up. You got any predictions for the uh, uh, inauguration in three days? Uh, there's going to be uh, a lot of weed smoke smell, I've heard. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The Christian viewers. That's a, hey, that's a God's plant. It's plant any, all plants are plants, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, no, not to go down that path. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be hectic. I mean, it's Trump for president. I mean, it's just kind of ridiculous in yeah. itself. I'm, uh, you know, real, I'm a, I, mean, I mean, being a flat earther, aren't we all anarchists anyway? Yeah, much? there you go. You know, I mean, like, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's all just a big sham anyways. It's really yeah. the... Uh, the Rothschild banking system that is at world with the world, you know, like, what is it, three countries left? Like, there's only three countries left oh, yeah. that are part of their, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. It's all insane. But, uh, you know, I just, uh, I just want to say thanks. I don't want to hold you guys up okay. too much. Okay. But, uh, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, there's this one, one shout out I want to give out to a YouTuber who has awesome research on Atlantean uh, structures and giants and just uh, the Vatican in general. It's a Russian guy. His name is uh, Philip uh, Druzinin. I can't, I'm not saying it right. It's uh, P-H-I-L-I-P-P-D-R-U-Z-H-I-N-I-N. Oh. And uh, he's got really, really great stuff on, like, you know, Atlantis, like, uh, structures. We call it old colonial style, really, today in modern. But it's, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of really great stuff out there. I think cool. Je- his theory is, is that there was a flood, you know, the, the, the nuclear of 1812, uh, you know, that winter, the whole year of winter, yep, yep, there was yep. actually a giant mud flood, and it was really a war between giants and humans, and we ended up winning the war because there's wow. more of us or whatever. Yeah, so it's a lot of crazy stuff, but, you know, it's uh, there's some evidence for all these mud mud wars, you know. So cool, it's, man. Uh, pretty cool. Right but uh, you guys have a good night, and uh, I'll enjoy the rest of the show live now. Okay, talk to you later, man. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. 334 area code, you are on live with Strange World. Where are you calling from? Hello, Mark Sergeant. Oh, boy. How in the world are you doing? Uh, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you were from Alabama. Hey, all the best people. I'm not saying the best football players, but. <laughs> yeah, I hate Some look, of the I was... better ones. I was surprised. It didn't really matter. They were favored the entire way, and they were undefeated the entire season, so. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. Well, I think I'm, what happened is everybody like me figured out oh, they got it and they went to bed and they, they lost their mojo and yeah. I don't know. Nah, I don't it doesn't know. really matter. Can't make be, it. The, the rankings come out, you know, when they come out for the next season, you guys will be at the top. It won't matter. Yeah, it's just it's just a game. Yeah. Question for you, yeah. my friend. W0TM, I'm still knee-deep in this Mandela thing and happened to run on one of his uh, YouTube videos where, uh, strangely enough, after making the emphatic uh, statement that he was not pro or con flat earth, he does one with flat earth questions. Okay. And uh, not, have you heard this? Uh, not really, uh, but, I, but there's so okay. much stuff well, out there. Well, let me, okay, he's, I, I really like him. I'm not saying that he's 100% right on everything. Nobody is, mm-hmm. but, um, he comes at things from a scientific point. Uh, but I just wanted to run over a couple with him that he said, like I said, he said, even in this video, he's not for or against it. Uh, he says as far as things like um, being able to visualize up to 200 miles over um, the ocean sure, uh, or something like he said, well, that's just a well-known scientific theory, which I've never heard. But he says, yeah, it works over, it works over water and ice and uh, gas, which is kind of weird, but that's weird. Uh, and then I thought, well, what about like the salt? I love cars. I love I love the salt flats. I love the the Bonneville salt flats. You know when the guy back uh, several years ago broke the broke, so, the, broke dawn, the speed of sound. sound. Yeah, they had these ceramic wheels on that car because there was no rubber. Yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he didn't even have rubber wheels. And, you know, they they kept the whole thing, and, you know, it had to be like 20 miles away. Yeah. Or, or you know, had you know, 700 miles an hour, do the math, you know. Yeah. 
um, imperfect side. Um, that's 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 the first thing. Yeah. Uh, and then he said, "Well, you know," he said. He said, "I invented t- uh, talking about himself, uh, radar." He said, "I invented right." He 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 says he's uh, worked for the Atomic Energy Commission and done all this stuff, and he might have. I'm not questioning that. He said, "I invented radar, and radar is not affected." Uh, by gravity like light waves is, so it will only go out about uh, 20 miles no matter how powered up it is, so why didn't it then go out 200 miles? Well, in the first place, if it's going out 20 miles, he says it's six feet, it, it shouldn't do that. Hmm. You know, it, it ought to drop. Do the math. That's interesting. Um, but anyway, I just wondered if you had heard of this guy and heard of some of i'm not gonna say his arguments he's saying these are just observations no no i i haven't but just for the listeners uh because we're gonna go to break here fairly soon what what's how what's his name again or is his channel w zero t e m wodum w zero t m wodum he has a, a youtube channel okay doesn't make too many videos he's made some good ones on the mandela effect but uh okay um yeah you know, i'll, I'll definitely check, check it out, out. But uh, I, I didn't really see anything that negated anything you've ever said. Yeah. Uh, I think his uh, his conclusions just uh, don't match the rest of the world, which is flat. Yeah. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> and 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 besides, and, and another thing he said was, well, why do they build these uh, TV towers so tall? Because there's mountains. You know, uh, we're we're just because we're not circular doesn't mean we're absolutely flat like a pool table. I mean, there's darn hills and things. Common sense, you know. But uh, anyway, I'm getting off on the tangent. I'm still mad about the football game. <laughs> <laughs> you got to forgive me. Nice. Bye, my friend. I'll, I'll let you go. All right. Hey, well, thank thank you very much for calling in, and uh, we'll we'll talk to you next time. All right. You take care. All right. See ya. Uh, uh, Bye bye. Uh, we got a couple minutes to the break. I think I can get through a few more here real quick. Uh, phone number to call in after the break is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. That phone number is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. This one email from Les Lotito. Uh, thought you might like to know if you didn't already. The flat Earth map is on the floor in the airport at Texas Dallas Texas the Love Field Airport. And he sent me a screenshot, and I'll be darned if it isn't a giant map, giant azimuthal equidistant map on the floor, on on the tile of the Dallas, Texas Love Field Airport. So thank you, Les, for sending that. You guys can look that up yourself. And um, I'm also going to use that as probably a a Strange World uh, thumbnail eventually because it was pretty cool. Uh, Can I do one more before the break? Maybe this one. Yeah, I can do this one real fast, I think. Uh, Mark, first of all, I would like to thank you for your efforts and your videos. Second of all, I just want to touch base and introduce myself. I am as skeptic as anyone would be. That being said, I found your list of clues rather fascinating. Indeed, I am looking into these things myself as much as possible. I am, however, an enormous enormous pain in my own ass and have to prove and see things for myself. I have a degree in film and video production and have let that slide by the wayside. I am currently passionate about photography and will continue to be. The thing is... That in all of that seeking, I am looking for truth. I may not want to see what I find. Ah, crap, we're going to break. Anyway, we'll see you guys in minutes. Or like no minutes. Hey, my just said, what's the truth from We are TFR. My faith in destiny is all I need to prevail. Truth Frequency Radio.
Welcome back to Strange World Part 2 of 4. The phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That number again is 720-897-6111. We are reading emails, and if I can't get to your email during this show, I will definitely try to do it during my Q&A show, which I do normally Wednesdays. Tomorrow will be Q&A email 18. That shows you how many emails I keep reading. And with any luck, my careless secretary will help out with those emails, even if she doesn't show up tonight. Uh, The end of this email by, and as soon as I say that, somebody calls in from 808 area code. You are on live with Strange World. Don't forget to turn down your radio. Who are you? Where are you from? And don't be nervous. Hello. Hi. Yeah, it's Mike in Hawaii. Wow. So you're, if I'm West Coast, Hawaii is two hours behind, right? It's 530 there? Yep. Yeah, cool. What uh, what's going on in Hawaii? My sister's um, over there right much. now. So I was thinking um about um the sun and um I just have a question. Sure. So I called my friend in the United Kingdom and the sun's down. So what goes on with the sun on the flat earth? Oh, you mean well, how does the sun work on a flat earth? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Because your because you're, your friend's probably saying that the most common question that people will throw out about the sun is like, well, how can there be time zones on the flat Earth? Because the sun, if it's flat, the sun's shining everywhere all the time. And my answer is, well, yeah, but if it's really small, you know, if the sun is like a like a mobile spinning above a child's crib, and it's only about thirty miles wide, give or take, then uh, it's probably also a directional light source, like a like a spotlight. Uh, so it's not shining everywhere at the same time. And, and if you've seen any of the computer models, really have him check out uh, either the Chris Pontius model, the physical model, not, not the computer model, but the physical model that I put a couple of his videos on my channel recently. Uh, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Because if it's even with a limited light source, if, it's, if the sun isn't a ball of, of uh, thermonuclear explosion that's going off that's hundreds of thousands of miles in diameter. If it's a very small light source, it's easy to visualize. But you do have to show it to them. Is that going to help? Okay, awesome. Yep. Anything else? It. Okay, hey, have a good one. You do. All right. Uh, 202 calling in. And before that, there was an international call. Hopefully, they will call again. Uh, but 202, let's pick them up. You are on live with Strange World... Where are you from? And don't be nervous if it's your first time. Hi, Mark. Am I on? Yeah, you're on. Okay, hi, Mark. I'm calling from Washington, D.C. Cool. My name's Lisa. I was introduced to Flat Earth about uh, December 2015. I wrote you an email. Okay, cool. And um, the email was saying hearing about Flat Earth was like, Walking into the kitchen, listening to your parents discussing how you were adopted. Uh, that's I do. You remember point. that you said you was going to use it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an excellent point. Good one. So I just got a couple of things. I know you got a lot of calls. I just want to. Um, when do you think this is going to come out? Do you think this is going to come out this year? Man, as far as I, would, the, the, I would really hope so. I mean, everything's in place for it. Twenty fifteen was kind of the the introductory to a lot of people. And then 2016 was not quite full throttle, but pretty close. Remember 2016, we opened the year with, with Neil deGrasse Tyson and B.O.B. And then uh, all the other people that were, were kind of the, one of the tenors came out to be a flat earther. Everything's ready. So I'm, I'm hoping. And I'm going to tell you why I think this, not to cut you off. You know, this movie, uh, Hidden Figures, you know anything about it? Hidden Figures. No, I don't know this movie. It's about a movie about these. I'm black. I'm African American. Okay. And it's about a, a movie about African American. These African American American women who work at NASA. Oh right, and right, right. Well, I know, yeah. now now that you said the plot, I've seen the trailers for this. Yep. Yes. So how lucky would we be as far as a race? <laughs> Flatter. I mean, the NASA hoax would come out, yeah. and then they would attribute to well. It's their fault. <laughs> because if it wasn't for them, apparently they had the mathematical oh, know-how. Oh, that would be awful. I totally, got, the, I totally get what you're saying that, yeah, if you want to scapegoat, there you go. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, because I thought, I mean, I thought the premise was interesting. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I see what you're doing there. A little new little angle on the whole moon, moon space program. 
Right. Uh, and I yeah. hear they're up for like uh, some awards as well. Yeah. Some some gold glow uh, Emmys or whatever they do. Cool. And the last thing I have, so I'm not, as far as the, the shape of the earth, I'm not sure, but I know we're not on a spinning globe. There you go. So the reason why we're spinning was because of the Big Bang, right? Oh. That's uh, the premise, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's... So, so we're spinning at the same speed for all these millions of years, and we're not slowly sl- slowing down? Good point. Or, or okay. heck, if you're going to go down that road, why hasn't the moon, our moon, which is way oversized for our planet if you believe that why hasn't the moon crashed into it or right one one further why hasn't the moon changed its perspective by even a tenth of degree every hundred hundred years there you go it's it's, it's locked in perfectly no matter what it's ne- i mean it, that, that sort of alignment oh you know what the odds are against that yes yes okay. and my last thing for the fyi please uh people when you're at work do not use the company's Wi-Fi to listen to anything about flat Earth. <laughs> uh, it's not funny because I believe I've been uh, not in, I've been fired twice, not for reasons of misusing the Wi-Fi, but this strange circumstances why I don't have a job okay. because that's what I do. I listen to flat Earth okay. all day through my personal device on gotcha. my phone using a Wi-Fi. So Got people it. do not research flat Earth at the workplace. Got it. That's it. Hey, you're doing a good job. I'm going to let you go. Take okay. you another call. All right. And I'll call back again. All Take right. Care. Hey, nice talking to you. No problem. All right. Bye-bye, Mark. Bye-bye. <clears throat> that is 720-897-6111 in the peanut gallery. We're, yep, I, I got it. Totally got, got that. I, I didn't remember the title, but I totally remember the trailer now. I should stop saying totally so much. Next email is from Michael. Greetings, Mr. Sergeant. I heard you on Canary Cry Radio as my first exposure to the Flat Earth research. I wanted to share with you a series I just launched on occult science relationships to modern science. And a phone call comes in, so I can't finish this. And this one's international. I don't know what the country code is here. You are on live with Strange World, and absolutely, where are you from? Because I this number looks international. Hello? Hello? Hey, hey, where where are you calling from? Oh, uh, I'm calling you from uh, uh, Flat, Mexico. Oh, cool. <laughs> do, do you know you're on live with the show right now? Yes, I was listening to you. Okay. How what, you uh, what's what's on your mind? And thank you for calling from Mexico. Well, uh, I, I've been listening to this uh, program for almost... Uh, uh, actually, you. I have called you and I have mailed, emailed you. Uh, for the last, uh, uh, since maybe May 2015. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. Well, well don't, you know, if, so if this is your first call, you're, you're doing well. What, uh, yeah. what's, what's, on, what's on your mind? And thank you for listening and sending me emails all this time. Yes, uh, it's, it's very nice talking to you and just keep the, the good work that you have done. And uh, let me just... Uh, point out something. Mm-hmm. Uh, January nineteenth, inauguration day. Uh, I think that's the. Tw- I think it's twenty. The twentieth, isn't it? I think it's Friday. Yeah, but uh, he's he's going to be uh, seventy, seventy years. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be the oldest president of all time, or something like that. In all times, so yes. So well, it's been nice talking to you for the first time, and maybe I will give you a call later on. So I can be more relaxed because I'm kind of <laughs> right now since it is the first time. Oh, it's okay. I I totally understand. Believe me, the first time I even did this show, I think I had like two or three glasses of wine, and I don't I don't think yes, it helped for sure. Yeah. So but you get nervous, even though you don't see anybody else, then you you know that you are on, on a live show. You know. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you for reaching out. And and I'm sorry. One more time. What what part of Mexico? Uh, from Monterrey, Mexico. Cool, right on. Well, thank you, thank you. It's well, it's great. It's great getting an international call, and and you know, feel free to call in again and email me and and mention if you email me, mention that you were um that you're from that you were the caller from Mexico. Okay. Okay, so thank you much, and keep the good work. All right, thank you. Hey, you have a good rest of your night. Okay. Thank you. You too, Mike. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. 
And yes, the phone call, you know, the phone does work internationally, so please, anyone. Uh, and yes, the peanut gallery says the oldest president to assume office officially was Ronald Reagan, aged 69 years, 349 days, who was also the oldest in office after his second term of 77 years, 349 days, ending at the inauguration of George H.W. Bush. Trump is not much older, and I'm sure the peanut gallery will give me details on that, but I don't know if we need to. I mean, honestly, the age of Trump really wasn't a factor as much for me as the as reality television star. I mean, Trump back in the day, you wanted, to, you wanted to vote Trump for president. It should have been the 1990s when he was the top of his game, when everyone is like, everyone envied Trump. Now, you know, they know him from a show where he yells at people and tells them they're fired. Well, not anymore, of course, but it's going to be a weird year. Anyway, uh, back to the email from, I believe that was Michael. Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, I wanted to share with you a series I just launched an occult science relationships of modern science. The general essence is that it shows a religious spiritual motive for a globe heliocentric earth gravity and big bang and much more. It's a lot of videos and very in depth, but they are all relatively short and there are more to come in the near future. You can find them at the playlists and if I click on the playlist, hopefully nothing crashes. Playlist is called occult science series, the hidden deity of the cosmos by Schism206. So hopefully you guys will, will understand that. Uh, back to this, though. I know you probably don't have a lot of time, but video 3.0, the godly globe versus the profane plane will give a good idea of what the content is. I am not a flat earther, but I'm skeptical of the spinning globe. Hey, that's all I ask. I don't have an attachment to either model, but rather I'm more interested in the psychological implications of the debate. But what the series really shows and is relevant for all flat earthers is the motive for faking the globe. Whether that's what's really going on, that's for anyone to decide. Thanks for your research and contributions and enjoy, Michael. So thank you, thank you, Michael, for that. Uh, I don't know if I want to get into that one yet. Let's, maybe I'll do that one in the second half. Caspar writes, Hey, Mark, there is a pretty good link about exposing Flat Earth. <clears throat> Since today this link is blocked from Facebook, I leave space between and say, delete, and say to delete it. You haven't shared it yet. I thought you might want to. It's at justpaste.it slash Flat Earth. Thanks for your work. I'm smarter, wiser, and more, much more thanks to you. Uh, P.S. Of course, I read his name. This is not my real name. I'd like to stay anonymous for some reasons. Oops, sorry. Uh, I didn't spell your name, though, so I don't think anyone's going to know who you are. Phone call coming in from 318 area code. Let's pick him up, shall we? Who are you? Where are you from? Hi. Uh, hey, Mark. This is Preston from uh, Shreveport. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Down, down uh, Louisiana. Right. How, how are things in Louisiana? Oh, it's okay. It's uh, really humid. Uh, it doesn't feel like winter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's on your, what's on your mind? First, uh, I'm a first-time caller, and uh, I, I just had, you know, two questions for you. And uh, sure. first of all, first of all, I just want to let you know, I've, I've been labeled the crazy person at work because, <laughs> you know, everybody thinks I'm crazy. You know, I, I try to be selective on who I try to talk to. I don't, I don't just go around blabbing ladders. I try to give people things to look at and uh, just try to be selective on who I talk to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah it's a smart way, of, smart way of doing it. Um, and you may have already answered this to somebody else, but certain parts of the day when we look at the sun, what the heck is that that's next to the sun? What, what is that? The uh, you mean the the weird objects people have been uh, shooting? Yeah, what what is that? What is that? <sighs> Got me, man. The, there's been weird stuff next to the sun for a number of years now, and people have been shooting some great shots of it. Uh, Zen Garcia might have a nice idea when it comes to uh, you know because he's been doing a lot of research on the Book of Enoch. What I can tell you is the the great thing for for me in flat Earth, and especially when it comes to those objects next to the sun is that they're in much, much smaller context now. So, you know, if, if the objects were next to the sun and the, the sun was hundreds of thousands of miles wide, these objects would have been bigger than, than Earth. 
way bigger than Earth. They would have been bigger than Jupiter right. in some cases. But if the right. sun, but if the sun is very, very small, these are ships that may not even be a mile or two wide, which is much more manageable. So, but, but if you're asking me my my theory, if there is an object that's being filmed next to the sun, I think it's part of the maintenance team, you know, on ships that are you know dealing with the sun itself. I you know I, I don't think this thing is completely maintenance free, and I, I think it's part of the system. Okay, I, I was just interested because I was—I've never really paid attention until I started seeing videos of it, and then I—I I had to see it for myself, and I'm like, man, yeah, there is something next to the sun. Oh yeah, you know, it just. But but you don't have to worry weird. too much now. I mean, I was really concerned when I thought these objects were twenty five, thirty thousand miles wide. Uh, but now, yeah. if they're only a couple miles wide, pfft, I. It's like so what? I've seen bigger ships than that with um uh in in science fiction movies. Uh, there's heck, there's bigger ships than that in Star Wars. And the cleaning, I'm sorry, the uh, peanut gallery says, are they cleaning it with window washers? That's funny. So wow. All right, and uh, I, I just have one more question. I know you got emails and calls. No, no, go um, ahead, go ahead. We got time. Um. Okay, I mean. Y- y- there is a part of Antarctica that, you know, you can pay to go and visit visit and oh, yeah. uh, look at. Um, you, know, I, you know, I believe that, that we're, we're a lot about Antarctica. So how, how do you think that they patrol that area? I mean, because if you think about it, that is huge. Huge. It's huge. I mean, that absolutely is a right. lot of area. I mean, how do, you, mm. how do you really think that they keep... I mean, do you think that there is people that try to go out there? I mean, how, how no, do we, we no, don't no, have that's, billionaires? The best part about Antarctica is that it's got such great, and I touched on this in the clues, it's got such great natural reinforcements, negative reinforcements, that no, it, it you know, when you're heading out to Antarctica, the water temperature keeps dropping until it gets to, you know, below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, which you know, salt water starts freezing then. You start running into icebergs. If you're brave enough to go past the icebergs, if you're on a ship, then you still got to deal with a 200-foot wall at the edge, which is the coastline. And after that, you've still got to, you know, deal with the, the, um, uh, the plateau, the fact that most of the entire continent – is uh, above high altitude sickness, which starts at about 7,000 feet, not to mention the multinational Navy that's patrolling it. The whole place just screams, go away, to where the average person has no need to go there. So yeah, if you want to spend your ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 and go to the peninsula and get your picture taken with penguins, you can. And if you want to spend a little extra money, you can get a tour to the what they call the South Pole. But most people don't, the, there's not a whole bunch of people that want to go. I've dealt with a lot of travelers over the years, and I very rarely have I ever heard anyone say, oh, yeah, you know, the place I really want to go is Antarctica. It's like the last last thing on your bucket list of, of pl- destinations to travel to. So the, the people that are defending it don't have to defend it as hard as you might think because it's, it's just a hostile place. I don't want to go there, and, and I have a, actually have a reason to go there, and I don't want to go there. So. All right, I just, it's just stuff that I was kind of been thinking about, and I just, I mean, how do you cover that much area? And uh, what you're saying you, makes sense. You, know? you have a lot of you have a lot of navies and air forces that patrol an area. You don't tell them why they're patrolling it. You just you, you just seal off anything around Antarctica. Plus the treaties, the multiple treaties in place, and I think there's one, uh, and hopefully I don't screw this up. At like the 60, 60 degree latitude, there's nothing. You're not even supposed to be below that. If you're even if you're a boat. So it's it's hard, but it's not as hard as you might think because there's very few targets to go after. Even if and if you're a if you're a billionaire or a multimillionaire with a private jet and you get a wild hair up your butt and you want to go down there, you've got a lot to lose. So if you're on the radio and you're you get a pilot to go down there and disregard GPS and just floor it, uh, if somebody comes on the radio and says, "Yeah, by the way, you keep going," and either we'll shoot you down or worse yet, if you land, we're not going to come look for you. That's all you'd need, and that's it. You know, wow. The rich have a so lot to I, lose. So Yeah, I, I guess, because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, okay, there's enough people out there that have money. If they oh, yeah. want to, you know, if they want to show people this, you would think that they could find a way. But and only, now, only now if they could make them that. more money. If they, they, yeah. For someone who's rich, uh, let's say Donald Trump before the election, 
what motivation would he have to show people that unless he ha- unless he owned companies that could benefit from the world finding out that it wasn't a globe but it's they would be a hero they would be a hero uh, to some I mean, you don't think so uh, to some some is not others the scientific scientific community would have a big problem with it the academic community would have a big problem with it the military establishment is going to have a problem with it uh, there's a lot of people that don't want this to happen. Uh, not to yeah. say that they know, but I, I know that it's, uh, you know, there's there's a bunch of groups out there, and I touched on this in the clues, that, re- yes, they would be a hero to you and me, and, and yeah, it would set a lot of people free, hence the title of this video, you know, the, the, the Flat Earth Frees You from the Globe Prison, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of a co- economic factors that would be changed and a lot of people those people that that protecting those interests they don't want to do it look at the little things look how far we've done to protect uh you know even smaller stuff like if there was a substitute for uh petroleum you know what the oil industry would do to to stop that from from getting out and that's just oh, oil. Push it up quick. yeah yeah this is way bigger than that anyway any uh, any shout outs because we're gonna i get a few more emails i want to read till the before the break uh yeah, I, I got a I got a guy that's uh, at work that's he's 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 coming along pretty good and uh, his name's Bruce and uh, I I pray for him every day, man. And cool. I'm just I just want him to know truth, and I I, I just have the urge to just w- awake people, you know. I know. It just it feels it feels good to kind of start seeing people because I can see their wheels turning, and I'm like, ooh, yeah, but, you know. To me, that's that's exciting to see somebody experience that agreed know? agreed everybody at their own speed though man uh you know right. don't and you don't have to worry about convincing them in front of your eyes that's why i try to portray to most people don't worry if they if they snap right in front of you as long as they're thinking about it give them give them their space and their time it took me months and i broke a keyboard doing it because i was pretty Ramp sure that i was going insane and who knows maybe i am but uh, i'm not gonna not gonna stop doing this Man, thank you for what you do, man, and uh, I just I pray for you, too, and I hope the best for you, man. Well, thanks, man, very much, and, and call again, okay? All right, thank you. All right, see ya. Bye-bye. Uh, phone number to call in before the break is 720-897-6111, and you know what? After the break, it's the same number, 720-897-6111. Emails. This one's from Ted. Mark, if you haven't done so already, look up where science quote unquote, supposedly came up with the idea of the speed of light. Olas Romer, R-O-E-M-E-R, probably butchered the pronunciation of that, 1676. It's a joke as well. As you have discovered, it seems that the retrofit of history with characters like Copernicus is also in play with the speed of light. It truly is in this enclosed world. Hey, I like that name. That's catchy. An instant thing. But to expand the fake universe, they needed a measurement to describe the time space they created. Food for thought, Ted, Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 8. Thank you, Ted. Do I have time for a few more before the break? Yes, I do. Uh, This one's from Mark with a C. Uh, The male lead, oh, it's about a show, TV pilot, This Is Us. And I've heard good things about this show. I don't think I'm going to watch it because it's network. But uh, it says the male lead has a rant about the 1986 shuttle disaster. And the next scene... He is told by a friend to drop the shuttle disaster. Then he says twice, there is something there. Hmm. Yeah, good point. 86 shuttle disaster. Look it up. In fact, all you do is say uh, shuttle disaster, 86 shuttle disaster, astronauts still alive. Type that in any search engine. You'll find some really weird pictures. One of these days, we're going to have to track these guys down. Uh, A few more minutes to the break. This one's from... I have no idea who this is from. Um, Mark, what is the logical conclusion of a flat earth? Okay, so it is a flat plane that has been pretty much established to a degree of certainty that leaves the ball earth promoters looking like people in serious denial or refusing to take the red pill content in living a lie. Strictly from a biblical perspective, it couldn't be much clearer, and the awakening to the resurgence of the flat earth fact has on fact, put together a plethora of loose biblical pieces that were before taken purely by faith, each scattered piece being believed 
on individually, although now all that has paid off in a big way. So much of what the Bible says is now so much clearer than it has ever been to the point that there are specifics in there that were in your uh, in your face type of things forever, like the physical proofs of flat earth uh, uh, having always been there, but no one asked the right questions. The scattered pieces have now found a home, making the Bible all that much more relevant because of it. Of course, this has nothing to do with churches or any of what I call the big box hallelujah stores. But that's interesting. I've never heard that one. That's good. But it does have to do with basic truth, truth about man, truth about God. Anyway, that's my nickel's worth if you care to have a look at the URL. And it's at uh, V-E-R-I-T-A-S-M-C dot org, Flat Earth. Have a nice day, Luke. So thank you, Luke. And we're going to go to break. And we're halfway through the show. So, uh, stick around. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. It's the top of the hour, and that means Flat Earth News. And by that, I'm just going into YouTube. I'm typing in Flat Earth, and I'm setting the filter to one week. And before that, of course, I have to shamelessly plug MarkSargent.com, where you can go and check out exclusive content by me regarding Flat Earth or whatever else I've got my mind set on that day. And the free site, of course, is EnclosedWorld.com, but it's not nearly as good. Um, so yeah, Flat Earth one week, and what's uh, going on? Uh, wonderful, by the way. It was great to see Flat Earth asshole uh, create a song as he bounced back from his copyright strike with the uh, ongoing battle with John B. Wells. That was that was great. It's a, it's a cool song. I really loved it uh, that he made called um, featuring Obama called "We Don't Have Time." It's excellent. Uh, uh, oh, do I pick you? Did Flat Earth Eureka Tower experiment? Joe Conrad's doing a thing in German. Mr. Thrivenstrad back at it with Time to Think versus Reacting Part 2 with Comet Eisen, Beyond the Veil Media, doing his fun stuff. Uh, let's see, page two. Insanity, Insanity, Michael Tellinger, Flat Earth Free Energy Magnetism. And I'm going to be doing a thing with Sandy and Sandy soon. Paul Sandu, back at it. Question Flat Earth. Meet Albert Einstein, the amazing myth It's really, really cool. Uh, a lot of people. I mean, the numbers keep going up. Uh, you know, we're back at seven and a quarter million right now, which is fantastic considering uh, how, how some stuff gets dropped off and then others get picked back up. There's always new people every single day. Uh, Black Hole Interactive is reproducing a lot of stuff. Flat Earth Hub is doing a lot of uh, reproducing stuff. Uh, Antobio, Antonio Subrat's doing more stuff. There's just, I see new names every f- day. It's incredible. And some debunkers from time to time. Nathan, Oth- Nathan Oakley doing a thing with Dave Murphy. Um, let's see what else. Who else is out there? Anybody? Anybody? Just catching my eye. I'm only on page three. There's so many. Jaronism. Students find the curvature of the earth. 
always good. Journalism's cranking up his, his subscribers. So is I'm curious to see 2017 if it if it comes to fruition. Who will have more subscribers, Eric Dubé or, or Jaronism? Because they're they're both doing extremely well. And uh, there was one person I wanted to mention real quick. Caught my eye. She's been doing like a multi part series. She did like an eight part series on flat Earth. She's fairly new to the game. And I think I'd I'd be irresponsible not to mention it is Daphne D-A-P you'll see it in my uh, I don't subscribe to many channels but I, I do subscribe you know when I see somebody sticking out and, and really putting themselves out there uh, you'll see them in her, her in my channel section her name is D-A-P-H-N-E space R-I-M-M-E-L and she's done like an eight part series seven or eight part series on Flat Earth where she just no, her language is not great you heard me read the email earlier she does not she doesn't swear like a longshoreman but she does throw stuff out there every once in a while so check her check her stuff out if you get a chance i was thinking of actually compiling it and putting it into a video i wasn't sure though i think it's pretty good though i i, I love the fact when uh, because remember the the flat earth community is still at least 75 percent men at least but there's a you know there's women that are willing to put themselves out there and i give them the benefit of the doubt almost every time I encourage them. I have since week one, when uh, you know I was I was telling you know, Jaren, I got to get Miss out there, and, and now she is, and I'm very very happy for everybody. So let's get back to the emails. Phone number to call in, by the way, is seven two zero eight nine seven six one 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 seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. And don't be nervous because I'm not going to give you a hard time. Do you hear me yelling at anybody? Yeah, if you're a troll, I might give you a little crap, but am I? Even, I'm not going to get too mad at trolls because. I would have been a troll hadn't I been more open-minded. The, you know, when I, it took me a while. I was stubborn. I did not want to get this. I did not want to look at this. I wanted to debunk flat earth and move on with my life. And that was not in the cards. That was my problem-solving ability. Just wouldn't let go to this thing. And, and now I am preaching the word. So if you're calling in, don't, don't, it's just you and me. You know, forget about it. I don't know how many people are listening out there. I don't have stats in front of me. I just throw it out there and, and see what happens. Uh, but you can call in and we can talk about whatever. It doesn't have to be flat earth. And if you want to throw me a fun comment, maybe you can stump me. Maybe you can throw me something I haven't heard. And I don't hear a lot of things. I'm going through a lot of stuff every day, but I miss some things in, in mainstream and fringe mainstream. Anyway, email from, oh, Sean. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, hey, Russia Today keeps posting space crap and flat earth commenters have become the main part of comments. I'm baffled and excited extremely. Look at this beauty of threads. And he goes, thanks, Mark. Good show last night. Uh, and yeah, he said this last week. And you get a chance. Go to Russia Today and start looking at their space threads. It, just about anybody's space threads. But Russia Today, because they got caught posting some fake space crap about that 360 garbage and, you know they, they basically built a uh, google earth simulation and they made it to where you could rotate around it in 360 but of course it was completely cgi and nobody uh nobody bought it and, and so they came out with a retraction and said well yeah of course the first three minutes of the show all that animation was fake it's like pff, pff, why did you oh, trying to get away with stuff so yeah, if you want to have some fun, go to any of the big any anybody that's posting stuff on NASA or a space program. Russia Day is a perfect one, and uh, see all the flat earthers just have at them. So great, great stuff there. Uh, this email is from Owen. 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 Mark, you mentioned creating a vacuum on the grand phone calls coming in from nine oh one area code. Let's pick it up. You are on live with Strange World. Where are you from? And don't be nervous if it's your first time. Hey, Mark. How you doing? This is Anthony Collar from Memphis, Tennessee. Hey, what's going on in Tennessee? Hi, not much. Uh, waiting for winter to kick in. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, you know, I'm up here in the corner of the uh, the continent, so yeah. there's not much happening up here. We got some rain, a little frost, but nothing nothing serious. Never nothing serious really happens up here. What's what's going on down there? Uh, not much, not much. Uh, got a couple of quick things for you, then I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah, I've been at it for about two years now. You know, I started up right around the time you did and everything. Okay. Uh, and you know, my first year, I was gun ho, and and I was gun ho before you even gave the advice to don't kill anybody. 
So yeah, that that first year didn't go off well at all. But now, no, now I would imagine the, not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, imagine that first uh, Thanksgiving, and I'm going home and eager. I'm like, hey, uh, I got something for y'all. And yeah, that that wasn't a, a fun Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> had the family looking at me like, okay, I uh, need. No it looks at you like you had a bug on your face, probably. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but now it's to the point where uh, my little brother, he calls me up and has people on three-way. Hey, uh, I need you to talk to them about this right here and everything. And, and you know, because uh, I've done so much research over these last two years, and he's calling me with other people on the phone to talk to them about it. Oh, wow. And so, uh, yeah, that that's kind of cool. And nice. Actually, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, last weekend I had a friend came in town uh, from Texas, and we we're discussing different, uh, you know, conspiracy theories or whatever you want to call them and everything. And so, uh, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, you're talking like you're open minded. Let me see. It's like, uh, okay. So I broke out. Um, well, what about flat Earth? <laughs> you're like, actually, flat Earth. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about it? Uh, they gave no answer and everything. And so, I'm like, well, tell me one thing. How do you know the earth is really flat? I mean, really round? And so, they scratched their head for me. I was like, well, um, what about NASA? Like, no, don't, don't, don't talk about NASA and everything. Yeah. It's like, but we got pictures. And so, I pulled up the video with the guy from NASA actually talking about how he composed the, you know. Oh, yeah, the yeah, the guy that, that worked for Apple for the iPhone. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So that theory shut down. Nice. So then it was like, uh, well, what about the moon? And so I um, brought up Project Orion. Yep. Pulled up that video. Like, well, if they're saying right now that they're trying to figure out how to get through the Van Allen belts, then they couldn't have went to the moon. Yeah. How'd they go? <laughs> yeah. So they're sitting Excellent. there like, huh. Uh and and that's great. Me, it's well, great that you're using video example because because a picture is right, right, a thousand right. words. Yeah, exactly. And so they're like, well, um, I I don't know how I know. I'm like, that's my point. <laughs> so I'm not gonna bug you on it. Just go and research, do some homework on it. Like, okay, well, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I could yeah. just, just do some homework. That's perfect. Then I got yeah. Then I got a lady at work. Um, she's in the conspiracy and everything. I was so and so. Yeah. I talked to her about flat earth and she's like, no, you're crazy. I'm like, well, one thing that gets me or, or that led me into it was the moon. Yeah. Like I see the moon every morning and you know, you go on time and date and everything, uh, time and date.com mm-hmm. look up where the moon should be. So here in Memphis, if I'm seeing the moon during the daytime, go time and date.com. It's like over at Australia on the globe. There's no way that we should be able to see it. Yeah. Like, okay, so what, uh, when we're looking at it and we see the sun and the moon, the other side of the globe, they have nothing at all. Like, come on, the sun ain't had nothing right there. Yeah. And so with her, she's like, no, I've never seen it. I'm like, you just don't pay attention. You, you got to see it. Like, I see it every morning. I see it, like, during the daytime. You see it all the time. Yeah. I work in the warehouse. So it was one day uh, in November, matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Moon's out, full moon out during the day. It was like around lunchtime, 12 o'clock or whatever. So I went back there. Doc doors opened up. I pulled her out the office. When it stood right there at the doc door, I said, look across right there. She's like, I have dog doggone. Shut up. <laughs> I didn't even say nothing. I just pointed at the moon and everything. She already knew where I was going there. She's like, just shut up, shut up, shut up. I'll be doggone. I'm like, what up? What can you say? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I, I can't say now. I don't know what's going on now. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm just telling you, something ain't right. Something ain't going on right. No, that's nice like, work. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's, that's excellent. Yeah. It's yeah, so, again it, using you're using perfect examples, and I'm I'm glad that you're you know keeping your keeping your head about you. You know, don't the the thing is don't get trapped into the emotions that you're going to run into with some of these people because some people will get mad. And they won't even know why they're mad. That's the part that I throw back at them, which is like, look, why are you getting upset? Oh, it's, yeah. Well, you know, like I said, after two years of doing this, you know, it, it's, it's I'm all past Way that point. Yeah. 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 
because it's pretty much like there's nothing anybody could throw at me that I can't throw right back at them. Yeah. It's kind of like, a, you know, some of the interviews you do. Yeah. Well, not some of them. I oh, yeah. The no, I, I've done it. And yeah, I've done you're it always so, so calm and everything. And as soon as somebody asks you a question, you're able to throw a rebuttal right back at them, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there's. So I, I actually you know, I'm the same way now. I'm actually excited when I can hear a question I haven't heard before. It's like, ah, oh, finally yeah. somebody asked something, you know that because you you hear the same twenty questions over and over. Right, and over. right, right. But uh, that's awesome. Hey, um, there's a couple yeah. other people calling in. Uh, any any yeah, yeah, shout no outs? Problem. Any shout outs you want to do? Hey, everybody that's keeping the flag, y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Love the work, and hey, y'all be blessed out there. Cool, right on, man. Well, hey, right. have a have a good night, Tennessee, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, have a good night in Tennessee, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. All right, you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Uh, whoever the people were calling in before, please call in again. We still got some time before the break. Meanwhile, we'll read an email from Don. Don says, Mark, I don't know why, but I'm still amazed at the reaction people have to Flat Earth. I have great admiration for you and those who take the time to attempt to educate people. I have adult kids that are pace on pace with me exploring all these things. I'm likely not one you'd expect to accept these facts. I work at a Catholic church, but I'm also a retired detective, so I learned long ago to keep an open mind. At least you know there's people like me out there that you probably wouldn't expect being a fan. Thank you again, and keep up the great work, Dan. And, uh, yeah, that's right. Um, Peanut Gallery also chimes in and says, oh, yeah, love Dr. Strangelove. And that's because the uh, at the top of the hour, the inbound song was a mix-up by Chip Baker, uh, and I think I did. I give you guys the email address if you wanted a, a track by him. Maybe I didn't. If you want if the if you like the song, the top of the hour and the beginning of the thing, you want to get a hold of this guy and see what else he's got. Uh, you can email Chip at l e a t t l e at gmail dot com. It's like Seattle only with an L instead of an S. That is really weird. L e a t t l e at gmail dot com. His name's Chip Baker. And if you want uh, you you want uh, to listen to some of his other mashups, I'm sure he's got some. So check him out if you get a chance. And Slim was also good in Blazing Saddles. Yes, uh, that screaming sound at the end of that that mashup was uh, Slim, who was riding the ICB well, not an ICBM, a uh, an atomic weapon down to a Russian target. He fell out. You know, he's fell out of the bomber bay doors and and was riding all the way down like a like a rodeo guy oh let's see here douglas writes hi mark picked this beauty up today i think it's gorgeous please add to your slideshow best always doug and what he's talking about if i can pull it up on my screen is the kansas i believe yeah kansas it's flat license plate so it's kind of a cool little thing we're doing here it's not really a formal club or, or anything but Anyone that you know, has a customized license plate available in your state, and you have six or seven or eight letters, eight obviously in New York or California where the population is the highest, uh, come up with a flat earth license plate and get it. They're not that expensive and, and show it off in your car. Mine is It's Flat. A lot of other people are doing It's Flat. Uh, Patricia from Hot Potatoes is doing uh, Flat Earth, F-L-T-E-R-T-H. Another guy, I think it's from Florida, is doing No Curve. I thought that was pretty ingenious. What, what can you do in six or seven or eight letters? And if you don't have the plate yet and you just have the screenshot from the DMV, please send it to me. I'll put it in the slideshow and I will probably use it as a thumbnail to boot. The last one that just came in was from Kansas. I think I included it in the slideshow for this one, and I'm also going to make it a thumbnail. I will use definitely use it for a thumbnail in my videos if I get a chance. So thank you guys for doing that. And 925 area code is calling in. Let's find out what they're doing. 925, where are you, and is this your first time calling? Absolutely first time, and this is OJ from the Bay. Hey, OJ from the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I'm calling you because you said it. This call is from, and then you went to a call. <laughs> it's awesome. How about that? how about that? Yeah. What's uh, so what 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 uh, what's on your mind tonight? Oh, uh, I just thought I'd talk about a little things that are coming across my mind. Okay. Anyway, I was turned I was turned on to uh, flat Earth from Max Egan. You know Max Egan? Oh yeah, I know Max Egan. 
Oh, yeah. And uh, you know what he said? He says, I don't have time for flat earth. <laughs> you know, that, and that, that prompted me to say, what the hell is going on with that kind of accusation when he tries to invest almost anything? Yeah. So that got me turned on, and when I got turned on, I started listening to you, I listened to a bunch of other people. Cool. You know, and uh, it was interesting. So how so how long did about. it take you to uh, to finally dig into the point where you're like, you know what, it's not a terrible idea? Uh, probably about three months. Yeah. You know, uh, I w- you weren't the first that I listened to. I think I, I listened to a couple of other people before that. But uh, when I finally listened to you, it was like, hey, I got to really dig into this and see what it's all about. Cool. Anyway. Right on. So, you know. Um, I had already been turned on to things like Loose Change and JFK oh, yeah. and Sandy Hook and yep. government deception in general. Yep. You know, and uh, that prompted me to say, well, just how far does the deception go? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Flat Earth uh, is something that. Uh, leads me to believe that that's one of the biggest deceptions going. There's nothing bigger. And if it ever gets exposed, it will, uh, oh, it'll it, turn the tide. It'll no turn. Doubt. Yeah. It, it, plus you have to revisit everything because it's, it's so big. Then all of a sudden you get a look and say, okay, if you lied about this, is there anything you wouldn't lie about? I mean, it puts, exactly. it puts almost everything back on the table, you know, and especially, Go ahead. Yeah, especially if you consider what we participate in from a government's point of view that is, you know, it leads you to believe, like, for example, we participate to the hilt with ISS. Our astronauts go over to Russia, and they get launched up every so often to go to the ISS, and there's no problem there. Yeah. Uh, we, we talk to Russia like it's, uh, oh, hey, can we send some of our astronauts up on your rocket? Oh, no problem. Yeah, You know, we also send all of our scientists to CERN, and they do too, because they want to know secrets that we don't know. Yeah. We also participate in the Antarctic Treaty, which you totally reinforce. I mean, all of these countries, they don't say a word about the Antarctic Treaty. No. We participate in it, and yet we want to make sure that we're, oh, we have adversaries. Russia is our big adversary. But yep. no, we participate in so many other things. Like, for example, our scientists, our physicists, they have symposiums, they have conferences, they all get together and they all talk. Yep. Like nobody's business. Yeah. And yet we have to build up this deception that we have enemies. Yeah. And that is crazy. Yeah. Because if you look at all the things we participate in, it's like, how can we do this and then do this on the other hand? You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. Yep. You're, so, you're absolutely yeah. right. And that's, that's an excellent point. That the, the days of whenever you, you know, you didn't even want to be ta- caught talking to a Russian, you know, back in the old McCarthy era. Nowadays, it's like, yeah. pff, you know, the, the mainstream media will say, oh, yeah, you know, the tensions are rising with Russia. But at the same time, it's like, oh, yeah. And by the way, our astronauts landed in a, in a Soviet, uh, you know, cordoned off area. People, it's, everyone's fine with it. No, no one has any yeah. problem. And they, and they gave them a parade at the same time. You know, yeah. hey, you're back and you survived. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's almost comical. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, that that uh, that kind of uh, perplex. It doesn't perplex me because I know that the reasons government need to exist is to establish a kind of fear based. You need us type of. Uh, reality. Yep. You got to have us because we got to protect you for one. Oh, but by the same token, we're going to send our astronauts over here up into the space with your fellow cosmonaut. And uh, it's it's almost ridiculous when I when I think of it. Yeah, it's not yeah, and, yeah, we we enemies but yet not enemies. Enemies in some Exactly. Aspects, enemies in some aspects and other aspects, the you know, the science especially in the scientific community, the, there's they're not they're friends all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's, you know, they're all in cahoots with each other, yeah. trying to think that there are divisions among us when there really aren't among the elite in the government that know they have to 
create a reason to exist, and the best reason they can come up with is to create as much fear as possible. Agreed. And they do that every single day. Just look at the media that just pounces on you yep. every day, enforcing that fear yep. paradigm. Yep. Anyway, yep. that was that was one of the things I wanted to talk about. The other thing I wanted to talk about is how we can prove that the earth is absolutely flat. And, you know, I've, I've been listening to the Jaronism mm -hmm. and the things that he wants to build. And I've been listening to, um, what's the engineer's name? Oh, that, Brian, uh, Brian Mullen. Yeah. Brian Mullen. Yeah. Uh, he, he wants to build, uh, you know, his thing. And then of course, uh, um, the more guy wants to build a six mile on that six mile long, uh, level, <laughs> which, <laughs> wow. you know, that's going to be hard to do and, and keep straight. But, yeah. um, what do you think about, um, launching three balloons? You know, we're, we're launching a bunch of balloons. They go up, they, they definitely prove the earth is flat. Mm -hmm. I've been watching some videos that are doing side by side computer animations from the guy in the Netherlands. Did mm -hmm. you see that video by the way? Uh, I think so. Think so. Where he he does the simulation and he puts in the coordinates of what the Earth would look like as you go up zero to twenty five miles, and then shows what a flat Earth would look like, and he does a side by side. Oh Have yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That that's pretty good in that he's using a computer, but it's still a computer animation. But then he says, and here's what it looks like in the end with a balloon, and yeah. it looks flat, and it is flat. So. Hey. We don't have to worry about that. By, by the but, way, we have 70 seconds to the break. Do you, can you do this in 70, or do you want to go through the break? Uh, I'll go through the break if you still want to talk to me. Okay, no, I do. I do. So let's, let's start it now, and then we'll uh, – so go ahead. Talk until the music hits. Oh, okay. What, what I'm talking about is a triangulation of three balloons that okay. gets set up with lasers that have – you, you know what a planar laser is? Yes. They, they use it to um, – a level uh, computer flooring yep. over, you know, big, 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 big uh, computers. Sure. And they spin around like a gyro. So, one, they have the gyroscopic effect. They keep things level. Yep. And then you launch it up. You launch three of these things up, and you put uh, these P90 uh, cameras on them looking for this laser up at, uh, let's say, 90,000 feet, which yeah. will not have any... Well, it'll have a lot less diffusion than it does at ground level because of all the water in the atmosphere, right? Yeah. Um, and it'll pick up that laser, and when it does, you record the height of the balloon from a triangulation point of view. And if all three balloons show that they're at 90,000 feet and they're hundreds of miles of feet apart... Well, then you got you've it. Got proof, right? Yeah. Don't you have proof? That's a good point. So... So, you know, I know it's a little bit more of an expensive experiment, but it yeah. seems like to me if we did something like crowdfunding or something like that, and all of the people that you're starting to attract to the flat earth, I know we got to go to break. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to go break. break. But, but go to we'll, break uh, we'll, we'll come back and we'll have you finish, okay? All right. Okay, stay, stay with me. Three minutes. Yeah, I'll be back. I think his zipper stuck. No hype, no, 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 no fear. We are T F F R Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. It's the last segment in the show. And yes, even though it was a cover, and I won't say cover anymore from this point forward, but it still was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. And because it's a cover, uh, I can use it and it's not going to be a copyright problem. So that's kind of cool. Uh, before we went to break, we were talking with, a, uh, with OJ, right? Right. And we were talking about the balloon thing. So wrap it up. So three three balloons with uh, three balloons. 
yep. uh, all with planar lasers that have been hyped up, and they spin. They're launched uh, one to two hundred miles apart. Yep. One of them goes up one hundred and ten thousand feet and then starts to descend. The other two are launched, uh, you know, a hundred miles apart from the center, and then when the laser crosses the uh, camera that's fitted, you know, in video mode mm-hmm. and or a plate. It records the altitude, mm-hmm. and when it records the altitude, it um, you know correlates with the other balloons as to where what altitude it's at. And if the world, if the Earth is flat, it registers that. If it's curved, of course, the balloons on the outside of the triangulation are much much higher because the Earth is curved, yeah. and the one in the center records that elevation, and it tells you, in my mind, that uh, we live on a flat Earth for sure. It cool. can't be in the night. So cool. It's not, that's, that's pretty good. I like it. All right. So the, the other thing I wanted to say is, could a balloon go higher? You know how we, we launch these weather balloons, and at some point they all bust up. Yeah, they do. Uh, because, yeah, they do. Can you put a balloon within a balloon, and then right when the balloon breaks up, the other balloon inflates to a certain percentage that causes it to continue to rise, and it goes even higher. And if we put a camera on top of it, because not too many people are looking up when these balloons are going up, we can actually see what we're going into. I know there are people like... uh, uh, the globe busters that are going to try to do that in the future. But uh, I don't know if they've considered putting a balloon within a balloon and right when a balloon busts, it, you know, another one and starts to inflate and goes even higher. That's, that's not a you bad know idea. That's been considered? No, I, I've okay. never heard that one, but it's, it's a, it's an interesting concept. Well, some, yeah, it is. All right. So the last thing I wanted to talk about, if you've got a little bit of time. Sure. Is, Go ahead. You, you, know, you, you know what SEO stands for? S-E-L? S-E-O. F-E-O? S is in Sam, E is in Edward, O is in Owen. No, what is that for? Search engine optimization. Okay. Have you ever heard of that? Well, I've heard of search engine optimization, but I haven't heard the actual... Okay. I haven't, I haven't oh, yeah, heard the, the, acron- t- the, the TLA for that. I have not heard. The, the acronym is SEO. Okay. okay so I'm, I'm kind of an SEO uh, expert. Not, okay. not really, but I'm, but I'm learning about it. Anyway, okay. there, are, there are things out on YouTube that pull a hell of a lot higher than flat earth. Like, for example, the search for the word Trump, yeah. right? Yeah. That, that, that pulls like 99 to 1, yeah. con, con, you know, against flat earth. Yeah. So, if we want to have a real impact on whether or not our videos get noticed, we need to start putting in the top SEO search phrases into the title. Like you, you search for flat earth, uh, you know, what's in the news? Let's put in the word flat earth, right? Yeah, yeah. And here's what comes up. And you need to start getting people's attention that aren't searching for flat earth. They're searching for Trump or whatever the oh, SEO I got I got Search you. engine optimization word is of the moment. Okay. And if everybody did that, you know, and you have quite a bit of influence, you said, okay, this week we're going to do this word in our title because that will turn on thousands of more people than Flat Earth. Who, how many people search for Flat Earth besides you? Hmm. Good point. Good point. Really? Yeah. So w- I think we need to start, like, for example, I, I had a website called flatearthgoesviral.net, mm-hmm. and I was getting 2,000 subscribers a week to a month mm-hmm. because I put in the words, um, you know, terror, um, government hoaxes in my title, and yeah. people were searching out those words, and they were discovering flat earth. You understand what I'm yep, saying? Yep, I do. Now, m- my my site went down within about three months because, uh, unfortunately, I was doing a lot of mirroring, <laughs> and that mirroring gets you in trouble because yep. some people don't want their stuff because they monetize it and things like that. Hey, right. you're intruding on my money. And uh, I understand that. That was my mistake because I was a very novice in the subject matter in that yep. regard. 
because I thought, you know, I thought, hey, people that are, you know, wanting to get flat earth, they want everybody to know about it. Why wouldn't you want to mirror it, right? Yeah. yeah. But that's not the case. Some people in particular, if you mirror their site, hey, you're intruding on my own proprietary information. I don't really care about flat earth. I'm just using it as a means to get more notice. Yeah. yeah. Which is tough which is totally bogus in my mind, but that's what they did. And my site went down, but I'm a firm believer. If we could get a coordinated effort and we took the prime keywords that were being used and put them in the subject matter, we would explode this thing a lot better than what we're currently doing. I like what you're saying. It's a, it's a, it's a solid tactic. I, I, I'm going to bounce it off a few people and see what we can come up with. Yeah, that would be good because you you are pretty influential and uh, and I'm trying. the other thing I think is that YouTube is it, it is releasing flat earth. There's no doubt about that. They put it in the suggestion code, but it's controlled by YouTube. Yeah, we need to have a consolidated, in my opinion, website where everybody not only posts to YouTube but they post to one site where as a result of the linkage to that one site, whatever that site is, yeah. it starts to gain a notoriety as a result of all of the accumulation of videos accumulating there in addition to YouTube. Because yeah. if you just rely on YouTube, they control it. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about that. True. And they'll control it in the means they see fit, not yeah. in the means we would like to see it progress. Yep. Anyway, all good, all good okay. points, man. So Cool. All right. Maybe maybe I'll call in in the future, but it was nice talking to you. Mark. Yeah, yeah, please. I know please you, do. You, you, you like to interject, and I didn't give you a chance to. Oh, really no, 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 no. It's talking. okay. Trust me. No, no. You, you've got your points across. Hey, at least you weren't nervous. Lots of people are. Yeah. So. Well, thank well, you. Thank uh, you. It's, anyway, okay. Hey, take, but on, you... take on the next call, and uh, okay. <laughs> more power to you. All right. Hey, you have a good rest of your night, okay? All right. All right. Talk to you later. Take it easy, Mark. Bye bye. All right. Bye. Phone number to call in, and I know there was uh, several people that were calling in from 850-907 and 908 uh, while I was on the call. But last chance to call in for the night, so please do if you get a chance. And the number again, 720-897-6111. And there's 845. Jeez, I forgot about 845. Hang on. Where are you? Where are you calling from? And are you a first-time caller? Uh, not a first time caller, but I'm nervous as hell. <laughs> That's a complete lie. <laughs> New Yorkers are never nervous when they call in. Nah, we like to talk and ramble on. We can't help ourselves. Nice. What, uh, what's going on? Uh, not much. I was enjoying the callers tonight. Good ones. Good yeah. People, huh? Yeah. And there's still yeah. calls coming in. I mean, I've got, I've, I had five calls when I was talking to that last guy they were calling in, not including yours. And then another yeah. guy's calling in just now. Uh, do you have any predictions for the uh, inauguration? Uh, hopefully it goes somewhat smooth. I, I think uh, it might actually happen. <laughs> it might. There's going to be people arrested for sure. Oh, no. Yeah, there's, there's, there's people going there. with the In fact, they will not be satisfied until they're arrested. Absolutely. Oh yeah, there's definitely gonna be people be people acting stupid and, and yeah. acting out. Yeah. I mean I hope it doesn't turn into something big. You want you, you know? wonder if any celebs are gonna get themselves cuffed with the with the plastic <laughs> ties. You think? Uh, oh, you mean celebrities will cut their ties with him? Well no no, you think like celebrities might show up and protest just so they can get arrested. Oh, oh, oh. why not? I mean it's a misdemeanor, as far as I know. Uh, like the limelight, that's for sure. Yeah, sure. Why not? You know, like an impromptu rock concert off to the side where they're. Uh, I can just see it. It's going to be awful. <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> because you got to remember the the last George Bush one. Remember the motorcade thing where they were throwing eggs at the car? That was just George Bush. You know, and <coughs> and this one, this one, I've never seen so much animosity towards a president elect before he's actually sworn in. I've never seen it. Never seen it. Even when it's been a close race, like a really close <laughs> race, like, like Truman and Dewey, or I don't know the one that people forget that, that John F. Kennedy, his first election, uh, it was only election actually when he beat Nixon by just a handful of votes. 
and you know you didn't see any protesters there. No, no, not not to this scale. Absolutely yeah. not. So we'll see. I, I got a Mark Twain for you. Oh, well, you're sure. Go. What you got? Truth is stranger than fiction, but it is because fiction is obliged to stick to possibilities. Truth isn't. Ah. Uh, good. Uh, and I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's good. I I remember. You know the. Uh, I always love that. What was is, was the Sherlock Holmes one? They say if you eliminate, if you're doing detective work, you eliminate everything else. Whatever's left, no matter how ridiculous, has to be the truth. And uh, yeah, I I love that one because so many times it is it, the truth is always stranger than fiction because it it's it, it's goes down roads where people don't normally go. And uh, I've always enjoyed that. But yeah, um, definitely. Any, I hate to do this to you, but unfortunately, there's this calls just will not stop tonight. Do you have any uh, no any any cool little insights? Any any shout outs? Any any predictions well, for the playoffs? Shout out to my my friend uh, Stephen out in Arizona. He's listening. He's, oh, cool. Uh, he's been listening a lot. Um, is he, is he a flat earther real... yet? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. He definitely is. Oh um, uh, wait, the peanut gallery just sent in something. You, I don't know why you two don't just get a room or something. He says, get your facts first. This is a Mark Twain quote. Get your facts first, and then you can distort them as much as you please. That's Mark Twain. Yes. Yeah. I love that one. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. I just want to say, watch. I've been going on YouTube just watching videos of uh, pilots, just, you know, cockpit videos of, you know, people just showing them flying. And stuff. Oh, yeah. You see some amazing, amazing shots of the horizon. And- yep. How fat everything is! Um, oh, I just stumbled onto a, a few that were just fascinating. I was like, "Wow, look at that! How could anyone look at that and say it's curved?" Oh. Well, that's just it. The the flight instructor that I was talking to, they all say the same thing. It's like they see it's flat, but because of their conditioning when they're a child, like like us all, they 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 dismiss it. It's like, "Oh yeah, it looks flat," but I know it's not flat because I've been told since I was six years old that it's a globe. So. I'm yeah. fine with that. You know, they, it's it's a paradox that they can get through because of the conditioning because they were they've seen the globe a lot longer than they've seen the flatness when they've been flying, and that's how they get through it. Yeah, but you're right. It's you know any pilot will tell you, and I think I think there's more pilots out there than than any other demographic that know this, but they're just scared to death of telling anybody. It's a secret that is just they're they're, they're busting to try to get out, but they can't. Who, who are you going to tell if you're a pilot? You tell anybody. Oh, yeah. If you're if you're currently a career pilot, you tell anybody you are not a career pilot anymore. That is it. Saying you were followed by a UFO, like you, yeah, said. absolutely, yeah, you'd be better off saying that that you were molested by Bigfoot. That would that would be yeah. easier. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> anyway, I, I gotta I gotta. There's there's too many. I gotta pilot. I gotta crank in a few more calls. But thank you. All for, right. Hey, I'm glad you finally called in. I thought oh. you were calling early, but. Oh, I was gonna. I was just busy, and I was just thinking. It was. I was watching something else on Antarctica that uh, it just pisses me off that people actually believe them when they tell them. Well, we take you to the ceremonial South Pole because yeah. the magnetic pole keeps moving. No, the pole is the goddamn pole. It doesn't change. It's a yeah. ball, right? Yeah. Which who cares it? about uh, the magnetics? I don't care where the compass is. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so annoying. All right. The 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 stuff and seeing how fake it is. All righty. Enjoy. Hey man, try to, try to talk to people. I enjoy. I really enjoyed the callers. Oh, and I got to give a shout out to the Canadian gentleman last week because I believe he mentioned me. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> nice, that awesome. All righty. All right, man. Tonight. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, last chance for you guys to call in. You got about 12 minutes. Whoever, I can maybe take two, three calls. So 704, there's 704, and there's 907. You know what? 907 is called more than 704. I got to pick this one up first. 704, I will try to grab you last, okay? 907, 904, I don't know. Which which one is this? Where? Who are you? Where are you calling from? Hi, Mark. This is Michael. Hey, Mark. And I'm calling from Mississippi currently. Cool. You called a lot tonight, didn't you? Well, they have my phone acting up because I got bad signal. I travel a lot, so. Okay. What's uh, what's, what's what's on your mind in Mississippi? Oh, no, just uh, currently uh, first time trying to call you. 
Oh, cool. So not nervous. Like on this new. No, no. Okay. This 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 topic. I've uh, been into it for about six months. Oh, then you're fine. You no. Know? <laughs> Well, no, it's it's more it's more along the lines that I'm just getting tired of watching the uh, the bullies, so I've become a bully to them. Nice. So if you ever, you'll you'll probably see me across uh, YouTube where I attack them. I've been recently tonight just attacking people on YouTube. Where a couple of videos, a couple of people put up, and they just asking the stupid questions of how do you get your math on a curvature, the curvature I see, and I'm just like, okay, I'm not sure where you're finding your uh, your information from NASA, but. Uh, the same math we're using, you just can't see the curve, I guess, no, or, or you're trying yeah. to see the curve, or you just, I don't know what you're getting from. Like, yeah, like we made but, uh, up the curve formula. That's the best part is we don't, we're, we didn't have to come up with anything. It's all out there. Yeah, it's right there. I was like, yeah, if you think you can climb, because this one guy thinks uh, he climbs mountains in California, uh, liberal California, yeah. uh, climbs these mountains and you can see the curve. I'm like, I don't know what rocky uh, mountains that you think that you're climbing and you're seeing the curve. Well, to be to be uh, to be fair though, and I got to use the the Star Trek Next Generation Captain Picard argument, and that is, it's not that he sees the curve; he wants to see the curve. Uh, well, like, that's what I did. I was like, "You're wanting to see all this, but I'm not sure." He's like, well, "What math are you using?" I'm like, I, "I'm not going to engage in you. Do you, you think I'm? Everyone wants to give you these explanations because they're trying to be nice and trying to to pull you into the flat Earth. I don't feel like pulling anyone into it. If they yeah. want to see it, they'll see it. If they don't, they don't." Yeah. But my big question is, is something I've been noticing uh, with NASA and the news media that caught my attention. I don't know if anybody else did. Everybody's been preoccupied with uh, the Nibiru bullshit. Yeah. But uh, there's a star that I've been paying attention to. I don't have a telescope because I travel a lot, and I don't feel like wasting $2,000 on a telescope no. when I can no. see things with a naked eye. Yeah. But it's a star that you only see for about two hours in the sky. And it's at the sun, setting sun, about 30 minutes after the sun starts to end, so it's a little bit of a light sticking up. And it's in the same spot every night, and then it disappears about ooh, 90 degrees up. Okay. The only thing I can think of that they would explain it to be is this Comet Honda. I don't know if you paid attention to it, but I haven't heard nothing about it, no other information for the past three weeks about Comet Honda. I have not heard anything about this Comet. Also, there's this meteor strikes that have been happening okay. that are coinciding with the direction that that comet is coming from, or whatever the star is from. And they're saying Australia got hit with uh, a meteor blast. I've been seeing all this crap across the internet huh? saying Australia got recently got hit with a meteor strike. All right. Well, unfortunately, Australia is such a big and desolate place that. You know, it, it could get hit with a whole bunch of stuff, and some people you never. Well, it knocked it. out a whole bunch of electrical and stuff. I'm guessing they're saying like the EMP poles, crap, all this stuff. Right. I'm ex-military, so that this is the reason flat Earth hit me so uh, so quickly, and I didn't have that cognitive dissonance is because I knew everything that everybody's talking about. It just didn't click into my head because I went along with the the bullshit because eh, it's a globe. It's a globe. Yeah. Until one day my brother then my brother brought me into it and he's like, Hey, uh the earth's flat. You didn't know that? And I'm like, eh, I don't know about <laughs> that. Because I was in all the other conspiracies and I was like, eh, I don't know. I kinda of mocked him a little bit, teased him a little bit, and then one day, uh, traveling on ninety through New York, I looked across uh Lake Erie and I saw the uh power plant towers that are across into Canada, across yeah. the other side of the lake. And I looked at that and I was like, holy shit. And it just snapped. Everything I knew just like flushed across my eyes. I was like, wow. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that was it. And it just, it just so many. So I just dove into it head first. And I was like, well, I'm in. Nice. But yeah, that, that star thing, I, I don't know if you, you've looked into it, but it, it's, it's quite interesting. Cause I'll take a, I'll I take a look. Gotten, the, the peanut gallery is checking on it for me right now. So, yeah. I haven't gotten my wife in on it but I've made her pay attention to the celestial bodies and the moon has gotten there quite interesting because the moon is not what they've been. Uh, every time that they say that there's this new big super giant moon, uh, they're lying to everybody because all these uh, fate moon phases that they keep saying that are all new only happen every hundred, 200, 300, a thousand, uh, 2000, 20,000, all this, this crap they're saying it happens like every five, 10 years. Everybody forgets because 
nobody pays attention to history. No. They forget something. Something new comes up, and everybody forgets what happened last year. Agreed. The supermoon happened five years ago. They said it happened like 10 years ago. Interesting. All this crap has been happening over and over and over again, and everybody forgets. And that's how easy everybody's brainwashed, because mm. they easily forget history. But that moon and that star have been uh, getting my wife really into it. She's not believing because she doesn't, she doesn't want to, to go and all that because she's kind of fearful. Sure. The end of the world crap and stuff like that she sees in some of the videos, so she kind of doesn't hmm. want to believe, but she, it's kind of hard not to, but she's always calling me. It's like the star, it's back again. And then an hour later, she called me out to disappear again. Clear yeah. sunny, clear sky, no sun, no moon. All you see is a bunch of stars, and that thing disappears within two hours. Huh. All right. Well, I will definitely look into it. Thank you. Um, I hate to do this to you, but I want to see if I can get one more yep. call before the end of the show. Thank you. Thank no you. No problem. All right. But All right, uh, appreciate it. That's awesome. Hey, you have a good good one, and I'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, last chance for anyone to call in. You got probably four minutes. Seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. That phone number is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. And I'm I'm sorry. There's so many calls that are freaking coming in tonight. Can I get you in? And here we go. Seven oh four. Finally. All right, seven oh four. It's your big chance. Where are you from? Don't be nervous. Don't screw it up. This is Candy from Dallas, North Carolina. Hey, how are you? I haven't talked to you in a while. All right. I've been trying to get you all night. I so don't know. I, I'm sorry. There have been so many other calls coming in. Well, you got, you, got, you got four minutes of my undivided attention. What do, you, what do you got for us? I was just wondering, like, what do you think of the sun dog? What do I think of sun dogs? I'm yeah. going to go with Jeffrey Grupp's uh, G-R-U-P-P explanation from his YouTube channel, Zeteticism.com, where he did some wonderful experiments with some glass reflection and he so says, you think it's, it's like the firmament reflecting it? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he says. He goes, look, he goes, if I had to take a bet, and he's a smart guy, highly educated. He's saying that it's um, that's reflections off the firmament itself, that it's uh, the sun create, and it's you know the off a curved surface. And he demonstrated this with some glass bowls and a simple lighter, and he and he, he did some great videos on that. And that's what I think they are. I do. Well, I think gonna, sun dogs are real, but I don't think they're they're just atmospheric disturbances. I think they're part of the reflection. Well, I, I'm going to send you in the morning. I'm going to send you the video that I, I was just driving down the road a couple two months ago, maybe, and I, yeah. I said, "What the heck?" It looked like there was two suns in the sky. I pulled over and started filming the sky. So I have a video. I had never heard of a sun dog before in my life. I didn't know what they were, and then everybody kept saying that looks like a sun dog, but they're not real. So what is that? Did you fake that video? No, I did not. Like, I don't even know what it is. So the next day I was driving home from work, saw the same thing in the sky, but I was on the interstate. I couldn't, by the time I tried to get my camera out to film it, it was gone. Like, God. So two days in a row What's... in Charlotte, North Carolina, I saw the same thing in the sky, but only one day I got it on film. It would, you know, sun dogs are interesting to me because they are blamed for many of you know, UFOs have been blamed on sun dogs and all sorts of fun little things because uh, sun dogs is an easy term to remember, mm-hmm. including I'll even go far as so about the, the greatest UFO sighting of all time, the 1561 Nuremberg, Germany event, where it's people, people still will tell me it's like, oh, that whole that thing that happened over the hour, the hour where these giant armadas or sh- of ships were fighting each other. That was just sun dogs. I'm going, OK, first of all. <laughs> How many was, were there? <laughs> it was a beautiful, cloudless day in April. It wasn't winter, and you know it, it wasn't going to last. Uh, anyway, but yeah, it's sun dogs. If I had to take a guess on sun dogs, I'd say it was uh, uh, a reflection of the firmament itself. Um, you got a, about a minute left. What else do you want to talk about? Uh, any shout outs? Anything? Um, no, I'm, I'll say I got something else I want to talk about, but I'll save it for next week. But. I was, I'm going to send you that video that I took in the morning. Okay. Yeah, definitely definitely send it to me and uh, and call again next week and call early, and I'll look for your area code. I mean, I'm not going to forget 704 now because you, you've you been just hammering at the line all night. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, no, all these Eric, I, was waiting, I was waiting until like the end, right, when somebody was about to hang up. I was like, okay, I'm going to call now. And then I didn't get it. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, well, yeah, and I see the numbers. Unfortunately, you know, it's not going through a producer, so he's not screening anything. Anyway, I got I to gotta let you go because I got to wrap up, okay? 
Have a good night. All right, you too. Thank you, everyone, who called in tonight, and thank you for all the emails. We're going to try to do an email show tomorrow. Ten Commandments. I don't have memorized. Uh, Maybe I'm not a good Christian. Who knows? But I do know this. Treat others better than you treat yourself. The world will be a better place. 2017 is going to be a weird year, guys. Uh, So get ready for it. Could this be the tipping point? I certainly hope so. And let's let's start it off. Let's see what happens at the inauguration on Friday. See you next time. That's a great honor and privilege for everybody here.